What's happening guys, Charles Salisbury here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is gonna be a little bit different. Instead of me doing a how-to or me telling you about products or what you should be buying or what you should be using, I'm gonna be talking about guys who've grown their hair out a little bit. This is a key point during lockdown when I know many of you haven't been able to get to the hairdressers. They've grown the hair out a bit, a little bit, and you want to kind of keep it that length. But you want to know how to style it now you've got this new look. So I've used my good friend Andy. He's a photographer. He's got a YouTube channel under Andrew Langston Photography. There'll be a link in the description. He's a great guy. And I walk him through everything from how you should be shampooing, what shampoo, conditioners, styling products, how to style, how to get it cut. We really go in depth. So it's quite a long video today, but we really do cover every base. The you need to know for having long hair. There really is no stone left until it turned. So with that, I say thank you and enjoy. Hair, tell me about your hair. Tell me what you don't like, first of all. That's my hair. On. Okay, well, there's a lot I don't like, I mean, like lots of people, I've been in, in lockdown for the past uh, three months and I haven't had it cut. In fact, you were the last person to cut my hair and that mm -hmm. was back in, I think, beginning of January, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah it was and, just before um, you moved. Yeah, so it's, quite, it's been a long time since I've had any professional care of my hair and it's got big. And um, as you'll know, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone in this, when my hair grows, it tends to grow outwards before it grows down so i end up with this big mushroom on top of my head that just seems to keep on ballooning out more and more um i used to have as as you, you'll know i used to be a bit of a fan of the emo fringe so i would everything would be straightened down and pulled across my face um and i tend to do that a little bit less these days because i'm <coughs> 32 um but uh, <laughs> i i don't know it, it is getting longer and 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 i quite like the idea of it getting longer and i'm i think like if i took <laughs> care of it i could have a decent bit of a decent bit of hair going on but now i've got past that kind of halfway point of it just being a bit overgrown and now it is legitimately becoming longer hair i'm starting to find that i just don't know how to take care of it. it it goes wavier and if i don't even if i dry it prop properly which i'm sure you'll tell me how to do it properly um you know if i dry it the way i feel that i should be drying it it, it still just goes like this afterwards and as soon as uh, as soon as i go outside and even a, a breath of wind just goes <sighs> onto my hair it just goes Pff! um and uh yeah, so I, so I struggle. So I, I, I tend to find that I, I look perpetually disheveled. And like you, I, I do uh, some YouTube videos. So I, I, I want to try and look at least, at least like I've given a crap enough to, to do something with my hair rather than it, it looks like I just haven't been touched by human hands in months, which is also true. So um, yeah, that, that's basically the situation I'm in. Uh, at the moment it's it's overgrown um yeah uh so i don't yeah i don't know where to where to where to kind of take it super uh well yeah i mean we've obviously had these chats before but i do think it'd be nice for you to grow out your hair a little bit longer as well um i don't want your length so don't go to no, no, i love no, your no. hair it looks great but it works on you i don't want down here i was thinking more you know this this sort this of kind level, of length, you know, yeah. Sure. yeah but, um, I mean, I've sent you some some examples, uh, mm -hmm. and one of them in particular for anyone who knows the show Shit's Creek uh, is the character Mutt, who yeah. let's not beat around the bush is stunning, and let's not beat around the no, bush. No. I'm I am not I am not a patch on that beautiful man, but you know no, I, I feel that I, I you know there's this hair. I could I could maybe do things to get hair because it's sort of it's it's that semi long hair. It's swept back. It looks like it's it's always it looks like it's got wet look wet what I would know as wet look gel, but it but it's not you know but it's floppy. It's yeah. not so it's it, not it's, like, it's not like rigidly yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, not yeah. rocked and sealed in place. Yeah. It's got that thing so a strand can casually fall down for him to then do that, you know that that. The way that the way that attractive way that people can do, and I don't know how to because I'm not one of them. Um, so that's you know that's kind of what I'm what I'm going for, and, and yeah, 
I, I came to you in my in my many hours of need in in saying, look, can you just tell me what to do? Yeah, super. Right, let's first talk about styling because that's what you're going to be doing day to day, and then we'll talk about cut. It's going to be some weeks, and even then, I don't intend to be amongst the first rush of people, people trying to get yeah, haircuts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I am fully expecting. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I am fully expecting, or don't. Um, I don't. <laughs> Uh, I'm fully expecting to to maybe not have this seen to until maybe even September. Okay, perfect. Um, so. You know, so so so, so I need to know what part. to do. Yeah, I need to know how to kind of keep it under control uh, from you know from getting out of the shower yeah. up until I'm out and about recording videos. Perfect. It's good that you said out the shower because the first part of it all is style is um, shampoo. The first part of style is style energy shampoo. So, what I would recommend is using like a gentle cleanser, like a gentle shampoo, something that will say it will say on it either it won't either it won't say anything, so it won't say like volumizing or four color or X Y yeah. Z, or it will say like daily shampoo, day to day normal hair normal hair. i hate that phrase but that's what i think it, that's what yeah. i'm using it's yeah. at the moment i it's i use a tresemme because unlike you with your professional tools i tend to buy whatever is like three for two you know i go yeah, to the supermarket yeah, yeah. and if it's on offer like great cool i'll stock up and i did stock up on those tresemme ones um, Fair enough. If I you've got it's... it, it's good not to buy anything different. I don't want to recommend you into anything different, but it might be a good idea to to move away from Tresemme. They've got a lot of silicones in it and a lot of, they're quite heavy shampoos. Okay. Uh, so that'll weigh your hair down and bring it all floppy into your face. Okay. In which case I won't, uh, I won't. Uh, <laughs> use it until use you use it up, Tresemme. basically. Oh yeah, use, I'm gonna use it up. I'm not gonna yeah, waste use it. it really Don't just, waste anything. Um, it's bad to waste stuff. But yeah, when you bring when you next time you're shopping, um, off the top of my head, oh, I mean L'Oreal or Garnier do like very good herbal essence. I think also do like a good light I, kind. I of have a nice. herbal essence as one as well, which I, I do use, and it's a, a coconut one. one, and it's um, coconut again. It, it's, it's maybe too heavy. It, Sorry, is it? Yeah. Coconut's too heavy. Yeah, okay. for your hair. Uh, uh, my coconut's hair. always going to add moisture, so it's good for people with dry, dehydrated hair. But right, um, yeah, you kind of want to stay a bit more, a bit on the gentle side, a bit more on the normal kind of. Um, Why is that for 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 my hair? Because I don't, you know, I I can listen to you telling me, oh, you need lighter hair, but. Yes, that's why, a why, good point. You know. uh, why you need it for your hair is because your hair is a mixture. So it can get kind of, even though it's thick and curly and wavy, if you were mm -hmm. to grow it like my length hair, you'd need like a coconut or something that's quite moisturizing to get a bit of, so you didn't have all this dry ends that I've got. Sure. Because um, yours would be more so than mine. Uh, however, because you want it styled back, you can get away with using a less moisturizing shampoo because you kind of need it to be a bit drier. Not okay. bad condition, but a little bit. You don't need the, the oils. I don't need it to be back. like a, an award-winning Labrador at Crafts. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Because um, your hair has such a nice natural shine to it because it's darker and it has the oils naturally. Uh, you don't need to add that in. You need to add something with a bit of... Just, sure. But you don't want to go the other way. So basically the spectrum with shampoos is volumizing, which is like super drying or heavy coconut oil kind of shampoos. So you don't want to go too volumizing because you'll just end up with a puff ball as well. So yes, like my hair can have volumizing because it's straight and flat and boring. Whereas yours, because it's got the wave, it'll just dry it out too much. It means super unmanageable. Okay. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yes. Um, okay. So yeah. So yeah. how often do you shampoo your hair at the moment? Sorry, everybody, for drinking water, but it's very warm. I'm drinking here. coffee. Um, uh, usually I do it every two days. Um, yeah. I tend to find that, like a lot of people, my next day hair is when my hair looks its looks the best. best. Yeah. Um, so I tend to not, uh, I tend to not uh, fully shampoo it um, every day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I tend, I tend to be every, every two yeah, yeah, that's what I'd recommend is probably if you find your hair gets a little bit greasy, which you don't, but if uh, if you were to, then it's good to do 
every other day, but shampoo it twice. Right. Uh, that's a good like habit to get into because then it doesn't strip all the natural oils out, but you're still getting a nice clean base. If you find you're not getting it clean every other day, then every other day to put shampoo it twice is usually what I'd recommend. Okay. For... The r- rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Exactly. Should you not that always rinse and repeat? Um, it says so on the label, but I always assume it's just so they sell twice the amount of product. It's that argument, isn't it? It's like, do you put the extra tea bag in the teapot? Uh, it's the argument for capitalism. Because uh, <laughs> you're using tw- twice the amount of tea. Um, yeah, I think if you're shampooing every day, there's no need to rinse and repeat. If you're shampooing every other day, it's quite good to rinse and repeat. Um, yeah. What about the conditioner? Because I, I have started, uh, I bought a... Uh, I think it's a head and shoulders one and it's got argan oil in it, which I don't know what that even is. But uh, again, it was on offer. Actually, no, I'll tell yeah. a lie. I, it was an online order from Asda and um, I had ordered a different one, but they replaced it with <laughs> this one. one. So this, yeah. is the one that, this is the one that I've got and I have been using. Um, How have you found it? I mean, it... it it, it seems to make my hair softer, you know, yeah. when I, it, it feels nice when I'm washing it out and, you know, my hair suddenly feels like I'm running my hands through a ghost. Um, uh, so it, it, it seems to be doing seems to be its working. job, but, but I, not having the experience of, of properly styling stuff that you do, I, I can't say for certain whether it's having a detrimental effect, you know, like, you know, now as you can, you can see my hair is, it is all over the place and, and I, I try to kind of blow dry it properly and, and stuff, but I yeah I don't know whether that conditioner is is causing actual problems. Maybe a different one would 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 help. Uh, and I nor have I experimented. I buy one bottle of conditioner and I use it until it's empty. Yeah, and then maybe I'll buy another one because yeah. I'm yeah. I am maybe I am not that fast. <laughs> no, it's 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 a good point actually, and it's a good conversation topic because. I think hairdressers at the to- uh, like as a whole, as an industry, we get very snobby about products. So when you're like, oh, herbal essence or oh, uh, head and shoulders or anything basically on the, on the shelves in Superdrug Boots, yeah, Safeway. Um, that's where 90% of people are buying That's where you're going to get it from. So yeah, it's, 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 it's bad to think that everybody's just going to be like going to the salon, spending 20, 30 quid in a conditioner. Because reasonably- I'm, like, I'm not. Yeah, I spend, exactly. if, it's, if it's under five quid, I'll buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might go, yeah, that, that, I'll definitely buy some soon when you're in the salon chair, but you're not going to when you soon you walk out. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've definitely had that conversation with you before when you were trying to <laughs> hawk me some Bumble and Bumble products uh, in your old place in Covent Garden. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, you know, definitely. And then you had a sea salt spray and I, and, and I said, oh, yeah, that does sound good. And I said, how much is that one? You looked and said, oh, this one's like 35 pounds. I'm like, no then obvious obviously not i'm not paying 35 pounds for what i'm fairly certain is just some salt in water in a bottle uh anyway yes that's a conversation for another day sorry to interrupt your flow it isn't and if you do want to make your own let's do a little plug for another video if you do want to learn how to make your own sea salt spray there is a video which i'll put somewhere up above you that will uh, teach you how to make it yourself and save you a fortune um thanks for the the step in there, yeah, <laughs> the little that wasn't, it wasn't even scripted. Um, no, basically, so yeah, I think when people are discussing conditioners, you need to kind of discuss, you need to know what works. To be honest, I don't know anything about head and shoulders conditioning range. Their shampoo range is really aggressive uh, okay. because it's supposed to be anti-dandruff. So what it does is just get rid of everything. It's very, like, very, very strong. Yeah, sorry <laughs> for the interruption. Yeah. It's a cute interruption. Um, we've got a dog, Ruby, somewhere, but she's out playing somewhere. So, um, so if it's working for you, it's great. What I would say is, like a side note, the amount of yeah. argan oil that's in it is probably negligible. So that'll be more of a marketing. Scheme I'm sure it is. A, I yeah. don't know what argan oil is. Even so, I've never heard of it outside of that conditioner. Morocco so, were the ones that made it kind of famous for their, okay. uh, for their, in their products. But yeah, I, you know, I did, as I say, I did not buy that based on that active ingredient because I don't know what it even does. I don't know whether it's right for me. I, Conditioning agent. Like, yeah. I think probably a lot of people, I bought it based on 
price. Yeah, yeah, um, of yeah. And uh, so, and, and that is, if in all honesty, how I, how I will mostly continue to shop. To shop. Admittedly, yep. given that I'm coming to you with, I have actual, like, goals, as it were, mm-hmm. I'm, I know that I'm going to have to in, invest a little bit. And I have already bought some products that you suggested, which I know yeah. we'll come to. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you do have specific uh, conditioner recommendations, I'm just going to yeah. close my window, then uh, I, will, I will take those on board. I can't hear, but um, no, conditioner, I would just keep light. Basically, it's, yes, you're correct. A lot of people will be quite choosy about what hair products they can afford because not everybody can afford the absolute best of, and not everybody wants or needs the absolute best of whatever is out there right now. So what I would say for you is if you're going to cut back on your, you can definitely afford to cut back on your conditioner, buy the cheaper ones, buy a very light one, just kind of a rinse in, rinse out kind of Mm -hmm. that style. Um, Exactly what you're doing. Maybe argan oil might be a bit heavy, like we were saying before. You don't need quite such an oily base conditioner, but if that's the one that Asda gave you, then use that up. Um, You might just need like a one again. It will save for normal hair, which is an awful phrase. But um, have any uh, suggestions for shampoo and or conditioner in uh, in bar form? If I were wanting to, when I use up what I've got, not get more plastic bottles in. Absolutely. Uh, it's a really good point because I wrote a really good blog post for my friend who does an eco shop. They're called Moj, M-O-S. I'll send a link in the description. But um, they, we were talking about the benefits of conditioners and condi- uh, shampoo bars and conditioner bars. For those of you who don't know, they're basically like a solidified version of the shampoo. So they're it's like a bar of soap. De- yeah, almost dehydrated. So they're just like a bar of soap. I think they're amazing. Um, they're fantastic for the environment. They're like the amount of water it saves, the amount of product you save. They last like three or four months. So if you're going to, and they cost about nine quid um, on average, nine or 10 pounds, which may sound a lot if you're buying two quid of shampoo, but it lasts for about seven bottles. It lasts for a lot longer. Uh, and they're very good quality. They're usually sulfate free. They're usually fragrance free. They're usually paraben free. So they're a lot better for the hair and scalp. So would you recommend Absolutely. that sort of thing? Okay. Yeah, right. for then you, I something. would definitely. Um, I think they're a great, a great investment. The only thing you need to do is, and it's what we said in the blog post, is you need to, the way how you use them, you'll need to change it up. So never put the bar on your head. No, you, um, in you your soap hands. it up first. It's like, like you would with a bar of soap. You soap it up first and then put yeah. it in. That's um, what I've been doing with a beard, a beard soap that I bought, actually. That, that ooh, came in nice. a little tin, and I've been doing that. that and, um, and then, you know, it goes in the hands first, then it gets yeah. worked through. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. That's, is exactly. that, that's the same then, okay. So exactly the same. You also need to make sure... The reason why I'll just say for people watching is... Um, because they're dehydrated, they're hugely concentrated. So if you're putting the bar on the head, you will get a bit of irritation just because it's so strong on the head. So by right. rinse, by putting it into your hands, by getting a bit of water in there, you're basically rehydrating it and making it a lot a lot better to work for. It's soft on the scalp, mm-hmm. um, which is the same with conditioner. The other point I would say is they're harder to rinse because they haven't got the water in. So you just need to make sure you're rinsing it a lot throughout which isn't a problem just make sure that in the nape of your neck and around here you just rinse it out loads and i think they're fantastic uh, okay. we've been using shampoo i've been using a shampoo bar on and off for a while because they're great for traveling yes uh, not that we're doing that over corona but <laughs> keep it in in a tin and just have it wherever you're going and you don't have to worry about it being confiscated i'm looking at one uh, peppermint um and they say it's uh, oh, handcrafted with uh, virgin organic unrefined shea butter, thickening mm-hmm. coconut oil, soothing cold press virgin olive oil, and intensely conditioning virgin organic argan oil. Uh, so maybe w- would that be a little bit too much for my hair, or, or do you think that would be? Uh, you could give that a try. Usually, mint products, as a general rule, without looking at it properly, usually mint products are a bit on the drier side just because you've got the mint that's going to cleanse the okay. oils they out do a it. lemon one too but I, I assumed that the lemon is just the fragrance they've yeah maybe it's just the fragrance they've used in it as opposed to the oils itself yeah uh, it's the not mint list- one 
will probably have oil in it but it, either way that will be cleansing enough yeah. give it a try i would say um yeah because that will last you months so it'll save you money in the long run and all right i'm gonna give that a go um <laughs> sorry i, mean, I, I a... brought you off topic onto 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 this again um so sorry i will let not you at all no i like, bring things I like back the idea to my of, of um environmental and skincare because i think we use so many plastic bottles with skincare and cosmetics hair care they all fall yeah. into that bracket I think something needs to change within the industry. So it Absolutely, is I agree. an interesting topic mm-hmm. for that. Um, so I've, I've shampooed or conditioned. You've shampooed your conditioned. I've stepped out of the shower. You've stepped out of the shower. So what we need to do now is gently, very gently, kind of pat it with the towel. The reason why for you that I'm saying that is you don't want to over dry it and you don't want to scruff up the hair. So you oh, want so to keep I everything always do of, that. Yeah. That's the first thing I do. I get out and I really dig it in. And then I, I, I get the towel. Imagine there's a towel in my hands. And yeah. I'll go like that between the towel. And I'll do that to really get yes. every bit. And That's then, probably the opposite. This... Exact opposite. Of, yeah, exactly. You get that. So then you're automatically fighting against yourself. Um, right. You've scruffed up the hair, which means it's, gonna be, it's not going to lie flat. And it's going to open up the cuticle. And you've pushed all this kind of, you started drying this up. Whereas mm. we want to kind of dry it smooth and flat to the head. And then you need to, the most important bit, which is what we were saying about before, about where we can kind of scrimp and save and where we should spend money. If you're looking for hair like Andy's or you're for you as well, um, your structure products are without doubt the number one place that you can spend a little bit. Uh, this is where you can... Afford to go a bit more over budget, a bit something that's going to give you a bit of hold because that's what we need really is. Um, I did a video of when to use what products before, but this is like your category three. So your shampoo condition, your structure products are what's going to give you the base, your foundation for the building that you can then build on top of. Yeah. Uh, if you miss out this section, it's just going to drop. Well, it doesn't matter what you do. It's If you just hairspray it to death, it'll still just fall out. So this okay. is... This sounds this like a problem. step I am already dropping. So yes. I'm looking forward to... Right. Super. Uh, so um, we've already spoken about products before and I recommended a product that I use a lot behind the scenes or have seen a lot behind the scenes on photo shoots as well as I've used it as well. It's called Queen for a Day by Catwalk, which is relatively... It's not super expensive. It's a treat, but it's not super... Walk and Bedhead are owned by TG, so I often get them mixed up. Oh, okay. They're right, owned by right, the same okay. parent company. Because I'm just looking at my Amazon orders page because it's due to be delivered literally <laughs> any minute. Um, in um, fact, uh, in fact, yeah, yeah b- between now and 4 p.m. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, Queen Sorry, for a that... thickening spray, £7.70 it costs £7.70, me. that's less than what I thought it was, actually. Oh, that's, that's okay. Yeah, so basically well. what that is, is like a spray in mousse. Obviously, there are a lot of other different variations available. You can get creams that are thickened, but as a whole... whole what they are is they're going to just add a lot more structure to it. They're going to bulk up the hair. And when you put it in place, when you dry it in place, which is what we're going to go into next, it will hold it in place a lot better. Okay. Usually you say, anti- go on. Sorry, you, you say bulk up the hair. The thing is when I hear terminology like that, and I think, well, my problem is that my hair is big and goes out and, and there's too much of it. So, yeah, to me, then right. saying it's going to bulk up the hair is that am I miss? Is no, that a word that I'm misunderstanding? You're kind of right. Basically, how it sounds counterintuitive, but it does make sense. Um, how they work is they have like volumizing in it, but they'll be heat activated. So, although you don't need any more volume to your hair or thickness to your hair, you kind of need the strand to be a bit stronger. Okay. Um, so this is only temporary. It won't do it forever, obviously, but until you wash it. But basically how they work is they'll coat the hair. And then as the heat happens, it will just gently bulk and strengthen the hair shaft itself, which means that it will stay in place for longer. There isn't really a word better than bulking or thickening than it is, which is why you get so many called thickening sprays, thickening creams. Uh, thickening. Well, I think that's a thickening mousse. Did it say on it? Uh, thickening spray. Thickening spray. There you go. Three hundred um, mil. So yeah, they don't thicken the hair. They'll just slightly swell the hair shaft, ever so slightly, so that it, when it, you put it into place, it will hold it a lot stronger. 
okay um be less fly so how and how do i use that then how do you use that so um basically so towel dry it the more you towel dry it the more stronger the effect will be uh you then spray that in that's quite a directional spray so you'll part the hair and then you'll spray like lines of it into the hair oh okay into the hair not like into my hand and then not into the hands this time this can go straight into the hair because it won't be so it's not cleansing so it's not going to affect the hair too much um, if you do find it makes your skin a bit itchy, then feel free to use it in the hands and then bring it through. But you're going to get a lot. I just kind of feel like if you okay, because I thought She's maybe I, I've never separated my hair or done that. I don't own a, a comb or a brush. No, no, you won't need a comb for yours. I just wondered if maybe having it through my fingers, my fingers act as the separating tool, as it were, to That's help next. me get. So once you've sprayed I'm just it, in, shut up. No, 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 not at all. I'm let Once you, you spray you... it in, <laughs> then you're going to bring it all back with your hands. So right. slightly bring your head back in this very unflashing angle that I'm at now. Uh, and then just push your hair, like your hands through your hair, quite into the scalp and just bring that all back and then through the hair. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. Super. Um, once you've sprayed it in with products like Structure Products, because they are then they're not expensive, but they're not cheap you can always add a bit more. So start off with a little bit, see how that works for your hair. Because what a lot of people find when they use products, and I've been guilty of this uh, more when I was training, is you use too much and then you hate it. It's too greasy or too sticky or too horrible. Then it sits on your bathroom search shelf for the rest of time. And yeah, you blame the product and you exactly. should be blaming your technique. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So start off with a little bit. And you can always add more if it's not got the desired effect to it. That's what I would recommend. Cool. Um, yes. That also kind of leads me into a lot of things. So a lot of photos that we see or a lot of films that we see, the hair will actually feel gross. So the guy in Schitt's Creek, for example, will have, if you ran your hands through his hair, it'll probably feel very tacky and very, because they've used loads of products to keep that back. Uh, but in the photo shoot, it looks In my fantastic. mind, it feels glorious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just want to um, get in and just... Just, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so if you are looking for a specific look, for you especially, um, don't worry if it starts feeling a bit like producty because that's what we want. We want yeah. the product to be working. So you need enough of it in there. Sure. If that makes sense. That does make sense. Um. Yes. So then we've got into, we've got our prep structure in there. So like I was saying before, most of these are heat activated and they will be for the one that you're using. Uh, I'm trying to keep it general and for you as well, but um, next hairdryer. Do you own yes. a hairdryer? I do own a hairdryer. Super. Does it have a nozzle on it? Uh, That's it the definitely, funny little bit. It definitely of. came with a nozzle. It no longer has it, nor do I know where it is. Um, because That's I've fun. never used one. It probably also came with one of those roundy things with the oh, spikes. Oh, yeah, you don't need that. Um, uh, so, uh, no, I, I don't have them. That probably got discarded with the packaging when I bought yeah, it from Argos for about £14 10 Fair years enough. ago. So, um, no, it doesn't. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, you don't need the finger spike thing anyway. But... Um, for the nozzle, you don't need a nozzle, but it will just add a bit of direction to the airflow and it will just add a bit more shine to it. So it makes it a bit more, more focused. Uh, oh, so yeah, it makes it a bit more focused with the, with the airflow and the direction yeah, of yeah. the airflow. But it doesn't matter if not, if your hairdryer is on the cheaper scale, mm -hmm. let's say, use it on medium heat. Because sometimes if hair gets into the motor, they get ridiculously hot. Um, and it can just frazzle the hair a little bit. So even yeah. though it takes a little bit longer, pop it onto medium heat, medium heat, high speed, and then dry it back. So what we're looking for when we're drying is to add a lot of tension to the hair because you want it smoothed out and you want it a mm. little bit straighter. So we're going to use our hands because you're not going to use a brush, let's be honest. Um, hair, dryer, hair dryer pointing towards the direction that you want it to go in. And mm -hmm. you're going to literally pull it back so with the hands. Yeah. So, so like like that. Exactly. Yeah. 
and like that. And what about on the other side? Because so you know, you can see at the moment. I don't know how it's supposed to kind of fall because it kind of goes when you know this side wants to go this way. Yeah. But this side should I do this side this way? And if so, yeah. at what point? You know, is it supposed to stop or is it all supposed to go over and so, then and then down? I you know I. Usually, that's a good question, actually. It's all over so the I'd start place. with the sides. Uh, the sides and back, really, let's be honest, you're not going to spend too much time on the back, but you can just smooth that out, but pull okay. it down as opposed to... Um, pull it down. Pull it down. So this, you want to bring it all kind of down. The sides, which is from the roundness of the head. So imagine this part here, which is yeah. going back. Uh, that goes back. And then it depends on what you what look you want. If you want quite a defined part in, very defined, which uh, like a teddy boy kind of style, which you don't no, want, then pop it in with no. a comb when it's wet, then separate it. What okay. you want is to kind of bring it both ways. So on this top section, what you'll be doing is pulling it to so my right i'm going to use my right and not screen right so my right pull it and then section out and just keep on kind of pulling the hair this is a lot easier with short hair and it's a lot easier when it's wet because this is actually hurting me um so dry it this way and then dry it all that way and then dry it this way and then dry it that way then you'll get it kind of smooth and straight but you won't have a defined part and the hair will just kind of fall a bit more wherever it wants to your hair will yeah. always have a natural part in, so it'll go there naturally. Yeah. Uh, so for you, it is on your left, um, where I can sit. Yeah, there. Uh, you How can't long see should where this I'm take? Because my hair drying takes at most 40 seconds. Because um, I whack it on top heat, top blast, and I go, and it goes, and then at some point it becomes dry. Yes. And, um, and then maybe I'll uh, rub some product through it. And um, and then go outside in the wind and wonder why it looks like a shitstorm. <laughs> I reckon you could get it in five minutes, maybe less, because you okay. don't need it totally dry. Um, you just need to. It's four minutes longer than I currently spend on it, so I'm good to try... know I need to invest some effort. <laughs> invest some effort in there, but you need the heat to activate the products and on medium heat, like I was saying before, you get a little bit more time to dry it into place. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's kind of a race against time to like put concrete. it where you want. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Actually it's a race against time, not just because of the product, but because once it's dry, it's harder to manipulate. Also because so, I've only got finite hours on this earth. So no, you know, if you I don't, don't get spend... it right, then maybe I'll expire before it's done. <laughs> You don't want to spend all day doing your hair. Yeah. Um, no one I'm does. only getting older, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, on a happier note, you'll look good when you're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you want to be putting it into place until it's about 90% dry. 80% you could probably get away with. Okay. Um, the drier it is, the better. But also you don't want to overdry it too much or you don't need to overdry it too much as well. So gotcha. uh, putting it back into place and then let it cool. So if you do get to 100% dry or 90% dry, mm. does your hair dryer have a cool shoot button? It will be a button yeah. on the side yeah, that you'll but, never um, have used. I'm, yeah. No, no, no yeah. I have used it. Ah, right. Some, yeah, sometimes just to point at different parts of myself and get a nice bit <laughs> of get cooling air. Cool. Yes, yeah. well that... Last few seconds, 30 seconds maybe, go over it with the cold air. What that will do is just set it into place. Yeah. Um, just same way as your iron in a shirt. Once it's hot, you can get rid of the creases. Once it's cool, it's difficult to do that. So it's the same with your hair, basically. You and I both know I've never ironed a thing. <laughs> I stand, I'm in front of you with an unironed T-shirt. <laughs> whilst, whilst I tell you with gusto how to iron yeah. your own shirts. I don't own an ironing board, so go figure. No. Oh, no. no. I no, I think that's a lie. I think I have. But last time I had to iron a shirt, I did the thing where you put like a nice towel down on your on a kitchen worktop and then and then just ironed go it on that and then ironed it on that. It was and it, and it was fine. Yeah, yeah it works well. Last time, yeah, it was when I had to wear a suit. Um, 
anyway, sorry to go off, uh, take you on another tangent. They're nice segues. Um, okay, so I've got my hair. It's 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 let's call it ninety percent dry. Ninety percent dry. And it's I'm 90% feeling, dry. I'm feeling it's good. In place. You're feeling good. You're feeling great. Yeah. Now we can get in with a little, little bit of wax. This is more for when your hair's been cut because what wax is going to do is make it very heavy very quickly. Okay. So for the moment, tiniest amount of wax, just to define it around the front right. and around this back here. So when I say the back, you can't see because of my long, long hair. But around here, you just want a little bit of wax to just kind of bring so that the, down these, so it doesn't these get... Bits. Exactly, exactly. Because okay. as, as you know, on my hair, they just start to curl out yes. in a really terrible way. Not in a terrible way, but you have quite a terrible way. where it's... <laughs> where, where the hairline pushes against it so that's what i was saying before like drying that down and then just a little bit of wax into here bit of wax onto this kind of segment here and then mm -hmm. the front part just kind of bringing that. when you're saying a small amount you're literally like a pea, a pea amount into good, my hands a, pea amount and then... a good amount for your hair yeah when okay, you've had then... it freshly cut you could probably use a bit more but it is going to weigh the yeah, hair i'd use down. more on less hair yes because the weight is, if you put wax on my hair, it would just go foot and gross. But right. when you have it cut, yeah, it doesn't sound right. But um, mm. you wouldn't use much more, but the structure you, of your hair cut would allow will it. hold the shape better. So it won't flop all over the place. It will just go back into the nice place. There you go. There you go. I'm not actually six endorsed pounds, by Bedhead. I realize that I've just told you to get Bedhead stuff. Uh, if you're watching this, then please send me lots of money. But uh, at the moment, I'm not actually... Send me there. some too. I'm the one buying it. Send Andy it. some as well. Just, just go mad for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, the reason why I pick Bedhead is... And again, I'm not under any any anything from them. They've never asked me and never been in contact with them. But they're quite a good... There's a better they're, end. Yeah, a good supermarket for brands. a supermarket, Yes. Yeah. Uh, but they're not like mid-range or high range, which is... Yeah. Um, so you wouldn't be recommending VO5s, Max, I wouldn't, Wax or... You could thing. use the VO5. I think they've got a Mac, a Mac paste or something. But again, that's very heavy. So Is it not VO5 but do the classic matte clay, which I think every man clay? in the country has owned at some point? Yeah, I've got yeah, six yeah. I feel like I've, I've owned that as a teenager. Yeah. Um, that's quite heavy. I seem to remember... I mean, again, they might have changed the formula. It's been so many years since I've used it. But if you were to use that and you were to use the VO5, then use a sparing amount of it because I seem to remember it's very... Even though it says it's matte, it's got quite a lot of oils in it to get it through your hair and it's okay. get quite greasy quite quickly. Um, VO5 do a good one. Yes, they're probably a bit lower on the spectrum or a little bit lower price range, I'm sure. Um or you can go quite high end with your waxes, like a Bumble and Bumble Sumo Tech is an amazing wax, but it's very expensive. I think it's 20 quid a uh, thing, um, which there's nothing better or worse. It's just what your budget range is at, what you want in your, sure. in your styling catalog. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're telling me, you know, the, the, the things that I want to kind of generally achieve, I don't have to spend that money. Or am, I, am I right? You know, if you're telling me I need to, in order for me to get to what, what I do, yeah. do I need to spend 50 quid every time I buy hair products? That's it, isn't it? It's, um, it's about what I was saying before with like the scrimping and saving. Uh, so you can save. So where I would for you say is a good, where I would probably spend more money is on shampoo and structure products and less money on conditioner and the finishing product, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, I would tend to suggest for most people, which is against what most hairdressers would say, but I would say spend more on your shampoo than you would in your conditioner because your shampoo is going on your scalp. And if you get an aggressive one, it's going to be quite, I get dry skin. So I find if you've got too cheap a shampoo, it can feel a bit too itchy and too drying uh, because of the sulfates they use. Um, but conditioner is going on the ends, so you could kind of get away with rinsing out. So for you especially, I would have a very cheap conditioner. I know I shouldn't say that, but um, okay. yeah, I would probably spend more what money on What about no conditioner? No, I would still use a conditioner because what it's okay. going to do is just seal off the hair. Um, right. 
because your hair in particular can get a bit too dry and a bit kind of fluffy and all over the show, you need something to seal off the hair and get it in good condition so that when you bring it back, it looks like that. Uh, I've forgotten the actor's name, but the guy of Shit Creek, that it looks healthy. You're going to have to have healthy hair at some point. So yeah, um, I rec- always recommend using a conditioner because they do different things, cool. uh, which is why I don't recommend shampoo conditioners because it's trying to do two jobs. It's trying to clean the hair and condition the hair at the same mm-hmm. time. And they don't, I don't see why, why, how. Take that, that wash and go. Exactly. Is that still a brand? I remember <laughs> I in, in every bathroom. <laughs> yeah, back in the in the uh, you know in like the, the late nineties, those those green bottles one. of wash yeah. and go. That's yeah, just yeah, yeah. that's just yeah. supermarkets. We that's had, all they had. We had tons of it. What I do do on OS though. So like you know, if I've I've styled it in in the way that I want, it's looking good. Yeah. This is obviously an issue that every single person has with their hair, and I know that it's an impossibility. So what I need is the best. The, like, the general best advice, when I step out of my house, yeah. and as soon as there's a bit of, wind bit of wind that sweeps down the street and gets to my hair, uh, ha- is there anything I can do before or during that is going to help that other than yeah. glass bowl protecting <laughs> my head completely? Uh, so your structure products will help, but you're still going to have a little bit you can use stuff with hairspray like hairsprays and whatnot some people like them some people don't um the one thing i don't like about hairspray and i do use it a lot um is you can't cut corners with a hairspray you can't just expect hairspray to do all the jobs that everything else that we've done up until this moment to do that it's literally just going to freeze what you've done a little bit longer they're anti-humectants um so they'll help a little bit with, uh, basically they'll put a barrier in between the moisture, the outdoor moisture, which there is a lot mm. in Edinburgh and England and Ireland where I am now, um, and the hair. So they'll just basically coat the hair. Like an umbrella. Bit. Almost like it's an umbrella. It's an hair. umbrella that an you umbrella spray on. Hair. Yeah, exactly. So they are great for that. Um, what I would say, again, going back to the environmental issue, use a non-aerosol hairspray. Uh, you can get them. And again, my friend's shop called Marj does a really good um, non-aerosol hairspray. And I'm sure you can get them around a lot of like, I'm sure Edinburgh Skincare, the one that you just looked off the top, um, did a good one. Because I find that using aerosols is just something we don't need to do anymore. Like an atomizer yeah. is perfect. So. Um the other so the other thing in, in that in that thing though and we've we've talked about a little bit maybe the products that you've already said will help but as you can tell like my hair when it starts to get a little bit out of control and as as soon as there's any moisture in the air as soon as there's a bit of wind um not only does it it just go all over but it also starts to curl and you know so you can see yes. very clearly you know i've got these these bits that immediately curl up and i prefer like a straighter look i prefer to have it you know, going back. And so sometimes I will get my, uh, my straightening irons on it, particularly kind of in, in the fringe, because that has a tendency to just full on Curl up, turn yeah. into, into these curls and, and mm-hmm. points always points upwards and forwards, like a weird ski jump. It's very odd. Wave. Um, and we, which means that if you can tell, I've, I've just got this almost pippy long stocking effect on both sides. Um, yeah. uh, just going outwards, like how, how so, not this? How not that? How not this? Um, so your anti-humectants will help hugely with that because that's what's going to just give a little bit of a barrier, like we were saying before. Because as soon as your hair gets wet, it obviously returns to its natural form. And for you, that is curly on, on that bend. So it's always going to go back to it. So you need to kind of keep it as dry as, as okay. possible, as least moisture as possible, which is why I say drying it till it's dry is usually better. Um for straightening what you were saying before if you do want to straighten it then just kind of lightly straighten it because you can make the hair too straight uh, which will get rid of the bend which means that the bend will happen at the root as opposed to on the end so you'll end up with a straight piece of hair that will then move it will just flop a little bit too much forward so you don't want to get rid of that you just want to kind of lightly go over it and then put it back, mm-hmm. let that cool. You could even use the cool shoot of the hairdryer if you can be bothered, or if not, just hold it into place. 
let that cool and then that will help as well um yeah. don't over straighten it because it will kind of get a bit too too straight if that makes sense yeah yeah as you um, know every every strand used to be full on dead straight full on because, yeah 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 because, that was back because in the emo, emo kids days. yeah yeah but you, oh, this uh sorry this this little that little fella bit, this this jerk doesn't need to be a thing yeah do, 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 yeah so <laughs> it's, it's it's a it's a problem yes. um yeah, so I want to get, I want to, I want to get rid of those. Um, so yeah, what that will do is by holding it into place, will hopefully coax the hair and the bend of it into into that where we want it to, which is into the head, following the roundness of the head as opposed to following up. Um, so by drying it into place, then spraying it, you should be okay for a little bit. You can go over that quickly with the straighteners, but you'd have to be quite dexterous because you're straightening a specific part of the head mm-hmm. away and your it's on your right hand side so yeah you'd yeah. Be, you'd have to hold it clamp it straighten it it's going to be quite difficult it's easier on the front yeah. but i would struggle with sure that I personally would have the i'm not sure i would i would have the skills yeah required it's very difficult for that when sort you're, of you're doing, doing your own hair especially on mid-length hair on my length hair straightening your own hair is dead easy because you've got a lot of would Thanks. as this grows longer will yeah. i start to find it hard even harder to keep control of or will it become easier because the hair weighs a bit more and it will naturally fall yeah so easier because your three reasons so one like you said before the weight of it um will just hold back better there will be physically more hair to just kind of bring in and they'll all kind of structurally stay together um so that will kind of hold it back it'll stop this expansion going outwards and more volume um so that will help a lot more as it grows as well you can put it behind the ear which would be fantastic because then it's just out of the way so it will physically coax it away from the face which is Mm -hmm. better because then it won't flick out it'll flick around which is easier to get a like yeah exactly that so once that part no one can see where i'm pointing i don't know why i keep on pointing at the screen so when your upper right part that's flicking out once that gets a little bit longer it'll weigh it down and bring it down behind the ear and you'll have a lot more of a even it'll bring it back nice and even gotcha. the third way is a bit more complicated because we get a bit more into cutting but it's not complicated but we get a bit more into cutting but uh, your hair or all natural hair will have a wave to it. So if you find it flicking out as it grows down, it will bend the other way, basically. So it will okay. kind of, instead of flicking out, it will start growing back down. And then as it gets longer for your hair in particular, that's perfect because it means that everything's coming back into that style. Okay. And um, if I, if I, wanted to keep it growing to you know this this sort of point and, and again you've seen some of the, the the styles i was after i think if you just google men long hair i think that's all i did and i found a whole bunch of examples of that sort of mid leg thing yeah. if i did go to uh, a salon or something before i'm able to see you what and i and i you know i sit down in the chair and be say oh, okay so what are we doing today and normally as you well know i've i have the same format and I say, cut it, please. Sure. Uh, take take the weight out. Yeah, uh, back sides, little bit on the fringe because I like having a bit of a longer fringe. Uh, but I, I I'm now I have now different requirements because I want to grow it out. Yeah. Um. What what should I be asking for? So if anything, or should I just avoid scissors? I want it longer. Don't cut any off. Or no, is that not uh, yes and no. Yes. Basically, your next haircut. You basically want to concentrate, get them to concentrate on the back. So you need this bit kind of shorter because obviously the way how the hairline is, this bit, mm-hmm. if this bit grows an inch and this bit grows an inch, it's down at your neck and down your collar already. Yeah. Uh, so you need them to cut this bit kind of in and shorter so without going too bobby. In... Okay. Yeah. So, so all yeah. around your Keep hairline, more... this bit needs to be shorter. So this part where the roundness of your head called the occipital bone, all that needs to be a bit shorter and kind of a bit yep. square, a bit flatter to the head, and then obviously tidy up the neckline. 
Um, and this time you're going to get it cut. I would leave the sides and top. Then next time, okay. when they're a bit more together, not even like weight management. I would or leave the weight. Like that. I would. I would let it do its thing. Um, okay. And then the next time, get everything cut very afraid. Show show them pictures and say you want it very like classic. The next long hair. time, Charlie, you're doing it. So well, this yes. is irrelevant. This is irrelevant. <laughs> but if you were to do it, I'm joking. The time after. Yes then you'd want it kind of very square through here and quite square on the top. So they'll know what that means. So you need, still need this kind of cut in nice and, nice and in with the hairline, but quite square. And then you can bring that back and that'll be fantastic because it will get rid of the weight from here, but you'll still have it long enough to bring it back behind the ears. Um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of freehand work and a lot of kind of weight removal on top of that, but that's the kind of general shape that you want it to be is quite a classic, like a, a classic gents haircut, basically, which okay. is quite nice and square. A lot of people like don't do them geometric. anymore. They've fallen out of, they've not fallen out of fashion, but they've, a lot of people don't teach it as well as they used to back in the day, but you kind of need a very, and a very classic haircut. Is the best. Is one. there any? Is there any of that? I or my partner would be able to do at home with scissors or shears or anything to help neaten it up sooner. Or 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 is this? Is it all a bit too advanced? I tend to recommend not doing that. What you could do, yeah. or you or your partner actually is better because they can see is tidy up the hairline. So what you do is kind of just get the neck trimmers on those little curly bits mm -hmm. and then bring it down and then literally in the comb, bring it down and then gently scissors pointing up, not across because otherwise you're going to get a straight line. Uh, scissors pointing up gently create a line with the scissors pointing like that. So you've got yeah. your scissors are basically doing that. Okay. But with your hair, you can get away with it looking unneat and i would definitely only recommend have, yeah not being we neat with it because otherwise you end up with like a straight line <laughs> and then it goes into nothing it looks awful um, i suspect i'm not gonna be doing any of this at home we only have kitchen shears not yeah, hair dressing scissors and i don't intend to buy I, any yeah um, i'd be impressed if they even cut the hair rather than just folded it and then just tore it out <laughs> so uh yeah i would recommend against it and just go yeah. to and a good a good hairdressers in Edinburgh where you are. Yeah. Or I'll yeah. wait until I do it, but we won't. I'm sure I'll find I'm sure I'll find one. Um is there anything else I should I should keep in mind? Uh yeah. yes, there is actually. When you're getting it cut, because you want to keep the beard, uh you want to I make might, I think I do. I think you crucially, do. Crucially crucial I mean I, I I'm I'm I, I'm I'm keep being hit and miss on it. Like my hair, it, it goes out. So I've been trying to work yeah. really hard at like using oils and brushing it, and I've got some yeah. other things coming. Um, I never, in, I I was never a person that intended to have a beard, but as we see, it is it is getting a bit bigger. And I think with the hair I'm going for, I actually might look uh, pretty good. I, but I don't have any intention, or I don't think I do, of keeping it long term but at the moment it was a lockdown experiment of well i'm just going to keep it going while lockdown's going and i may I'm, i may see how it goes being a bit longer or i may just get to a point where i'm like sod it straight off I, I, I haven't been clean shaven since i was about 19 but um i, I will probably just take it down uh, yeah you know it, it's right now it's like I don't know, like five centimeters long. I might bring yeah. it down to one centimeter. So it's basically like it's more like a, a thicker stubble. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Whereas right now it's it is a beard. Yeah, personally, I like it. I think it looks great, and exactly the same point as what you just said with the beard, just with the hair, and why I say about conditioner. Because with beards, using an oil is so good for it. It's good for the skin and it just keeps everything together so that you don't end up with it all kind of raggedy and kind of style. It looks yeah. nice and neat. It'll add a bit of consistency to the color. I don't want to say it'll color it, but if you're using an oil, it'll just add a bit of a nice shine to it so it'll look a lot better. I think I would keep it personally, but what I would say is there's usually a part, depends on people's facial hair, 
um, and because we haven't cut it with the beard, there's usually a part that's a bit gappier here. Here, this yeah. bit you mean. So just make sure they don't take that too short because otherwise it will go beard, gap, hair. Um, okay, so I need my hair still to fall. Yeah. Where so you, even when you're bringing is. it back, you'll notice it even more. But just keep a tiny bit through this part, just a little bit to kind of cover that over. Maybe it isn't going to affect you, but I see a lot with gents that are growing their hair out and keeping a beard. Um, okay. I also need to learn how to how to how to maintain this in terms of because I haven't really trimmed it or or tried to shape it, and there's mm. a lot of it un, under here, and I don't know if it should be. I don't know. I mean, I'm not so, asking you because you don't have a beard, and I'm assuming you don't know loads on beards, but maybe you do. I did my uh, beard, my barber training at London School of Barbering. Um, basically. The idea is to smooth to classic. I don't like you, the, but basically you want to reduce the length here and bring mm. it a little bit ni nice around here. So what that's going to do is kind of thin out the face and make it a little bit long, a little bit more of a jawline through there, if that makes sense. Oh, Almost what you have now, what you have now is pretty much bang on. Uh, obviously as it grows, this is going to get longer. Um, how I would do beards or how I do do beards is brush out everything like fully. Um, yeah. So and almost then, like backcomb it. No, just not backcombing, but oh. combing out. Backcombing is where you kind of comb against the hair and it brings it. Yeah. How, well, how, what you're doing how with your you hands now. Yeah. Yeah. Up, upwards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well sorry. That's, that's what I'm, I mean, as in, you know, the hair yeah, goes yeah. down. Yeah. Whereas, I'd brush upwards. Yes, exactly. And when you do, it's that back home is back home in something Oof. different, but that's perfect. And then with the clippers, I would uh, like follow the line of the beard that I want. You do look, yeah, basically comb it all out. And then with the clippers, just follow the line of what you want, basically, and just, cut, just take off those very ends. It's quite difficult to do. You probably need to stabilize yourself, but keep your head forward. Don't do that. Keep your head forward and then just literally follow the line. Oh, okay, good, good idea. Um, and then sweep it all up afterwards, crucially. And then sweep don't it leave all over my bathroom floor. Yeah, and be careful you don't just go Meh! into it because then you obviously have to shave it all up. Yeah, keep it nice yeah. and gentle. Uh, but yes, I would recommend uh, beard product, beard products wise. I recommend things like oak because they were really good when in a barber shop that I used to know somebody who worked in in berlin for a german product and they're fantastic they're very oil they're very high-end kind of which i think if it's on your skin you can afford to spend a little bit more on it mm. because otherwise you get the beard itch or beard rash well thanks for that i i really appreciate appreciate that no i'm worries. sure that i am not the only man who's in uh this situation um but uh, and I think it's it's a good op it's been a good good opportunity to try and grow it out because obviously if I'm just working normally if I'm going places doing things seeing people I'd be too embarrassed to kind of go out and about with that halfway house sort of yeah 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 you know my hair is just a little bit overgrown it's not long whereas I think I'm I'm just on the other side of that point where it's actually legitimately starting to become like longer hair. And as yeah. long as I style it properly, it's going to become obvious that that's what I'm doing rather than just it being overgrown. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. which I think, no, is, I, think I think we stick with growing it. And I think that now you've got the length a little bit, it's going to be easy. You've got through the hard stage, like you were saying. So it's easier now to kind of get it longer, obviously not as long as mine, but it, there was a point in my hair where I looked super scruffy all the time and I had to wear shirts and what have you just to feel neat and then it all of a sudden it fits into place and it, it suits you. Your hair, I don't know what you've done, but seemed to go from, because you shaved your head and you, uh, yeah. uh, and it was horrific, frankly. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to miss my words. I didn't, I, I don't think you suited having, having your head shaved. Having head shaved. But I you might did put it. a picture of me head shaved up oh, above God. that. Uh, like for someone who had such beautiful hair both before and after having your head shaved was like, why would you do that? Well, anyway, um, uh, but like, you seem to go from having your head shaved to having not this length hair, but having like longer hair, like this length within, it, it seemed within three weeks. Yeah, it grew out super quick. Um, yeah, don't know why. 
and now it yeah. seems to have stayed at this length for a very long time but i yeah. didn't do it cut actually because it's quite dry well, you should shave it off and sell it to a wig maker and then grow it back again and within six weeks yeah, maybe make yeah and, then, and then sell sell even more you you're, you're literally growing your own business wig. yeah make money on your wig, wig, wig farm wig farm <laughs> their own personal wig farm yeah. <laughs> yes excellent cool well uh thank you again for that that's been a big help. thank you it's been fantastic